Hi, I'm James Morris, and I'm the Extension Educator for the Ohio State University Extension in Brown County. And I'm going to be continuing today's topic of pushing soybean productivity in Ohio. I'm going to go through a research plot that we did with the producer in Brown County in 2020. And hopefully that can provide you, of course, with some information about what we learned, but it, and most importantly, help you make some decisions for this upcoming year and especially as it relates to foliar fertilizer applications on soybeans. So you got to see a little preview of the field that we were working with. And just to give you an idea, it's just an eight acre sub portion of a much larger field. But now as you look at the map here, this is looking at our soil types. And we were really dealing with only two predominant soil types in this part of the field, and both were a silt loam. And we typically deal with these two types of silt loams here in Brown County. And this is a Claremont silt loam and a Westboro Shaper silt loam. And you can also check by this next map that our plot layout, we really had both types of soil represented in, in our uh, study. Now, we also had two treatments, but we had three replications of each of those treatments. Now, of course, the first treatment was our check or our control, where we had no foliar fertilizer applied at all. And then we also had three replications of those rows with two quarts per acre of a foliar fertilizer applied. And the analysis on that foliar fertilizer was actually 846 for our nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And then we had 0.1 for our boron, and then 0.2 for copper, one manganese, and also one zinc. So we had some micros along with some of our macronutrients as well mixed in with this application. So now that we've had a chance to take a look at the layout of this field, let's talk a little bit more about some of the work that went into it throughout the summer and of course, we'll get to the results as well. But first, let's talk about the beginning. We really didn't get a chance to plant this when we anticipated. So it was planted a little bit later in the year. The spring just didn't allow us to get out there. And you know, we were very upfront with the producer at the beginning. We said, hey, this is just a very small eight acre patch of, of your crops. Let's just focus on getting your stuff done first. We'll get to ours when we get to it. And we did get to it, but it was later on June 15th of 2020 was our official plant date. So as you all know, as we get later into the year, of course, maybe we didn't plant till June, so our, our soybeans are getting a late start, but mother nature doesn't wait. So the weeds were still coming on pretty strong. Um, and that was the kind of the downside here is we were really wanting to, as the producer was wanting to apply this with the herbicide at the same time. So we're only making one pass, one less pass across the field. And in order to do that, we really had to step up the time that we were going to be putting this, uh, this foliar fertilizer on. So within just a little less than a month, we were back out there making the foliar fertilizer in the herbicide application as well. Now the herbicide was applied to all of the, the rows, but we did shut off, as we mentioned, the control versus the treated areas. So with this setback, it had us making this foliar fertilizer application a little earlier than we wanted to, but in order to make sure we had an effective weed control program, that was the decision we had to make for what was best for the producer. And for that part of it, for the weed control portion, it, it did pay off and we did see a, a pretty clean field and did not have any yield effect in that matter for the plot. Now, as far as the yield results go, we'll get to that in just a minute. But as we mentioned, this put us back on our application a little bit. So most labels for foliar fertilizers will call for the R1 to R3 growth stage. So that beginning flower stage for the soybeans and that early reproductive stage. We made this application actually about the V5, V6. So we were just a little before that reproductive stage and, and flowering had not initiated yet. And again, we'll talk about some of those effects in just a minute, but I think that's important to note in this situation and in this trial. Now you can see we made the applications here with a top air sprayer, a top air 110. And on this case, the sprayer booms were about 66 foot wide. So that set our trial width for us. And by the time we came around throughout the middle of the season, we still didn't see any observations health-wise or visually we could tell what the yield was going to look like. So no visual observations uh, were, were observed. And especially as we got into harvest at about November 6th is when we harvested, harvested this plot we still didn't see any stand issues, any disease pressure, and of course, no weed pressure. And overall, just from a general observation over the field, we could not tell any differences between the treatments and replications. And again, as I mentioned, we did harvest this field on November 6th. And if you think back to the plot layout, we had our three replications across the field. 
And I also mentioned that the spray width was about 66 feet wide and our header width on the combine was about 25 feet. So that gave us the opportunity to make two passes back and forth to each treatment and for a total harvest width of 50 feet. So it did leave us some buffer on each end to avoid any overlap on the application or any missed areas on the next start of the next treatment. And after we went down and back for our total 50 foot harvest width, we would bring it back and then weigh that out on a weigh wagon, take a moisture reading and take the total sample weight. And after we did that for each of those trials, we took um, a combined average across all of them and each one of those treatments ended up averaging out to be 59 bushels per acre. Uh, we really didn't see any difference. And even when we were in the combine and, and harvesting in the field, you see it being put in the weigh wagon. We didn't tell any difference in the quality of the grain or any of the size of the grain either. So a lot of the test weights were right around the same. And I think it, it, the moisture percentage was also right at 11.4% for each trial. So no difference in the moisture percentage either. So I, we didn't see the yield result that we typically want to see with an arm farm research plot, but I think this was a very valuable research plot in the fact that we learned so much about the use of these foliar fertilizers. You know, you have to um, be able to make these management decisions if you plan on using them. What do you anticipate spring to look like? I know that's always a great question, but maybe don't ask that about the weather. Ask that about yourself. What does your spring look like? Did you pick up more acres this year or do you have the employees on hand to be able to make these decisions? Okay, this, this foliar fertilizer needs to be applied on this recommended label uh, growth stage. How difficult, you have to be honest with yourself, how difficult do you think it's going to be to make that application within that window? You know, our windows for the springs lately have been tighter than ever before, it seems. So make sure that, that you plan accordingly. If you plan to use these in a system, uh, because in this situation, we didn't see that yield benefit. So in the long term or in the, the, the situation throughout the year, it negatively affected this producer's profitability. Now, luckily for this producer, it wasn't a whole lot. But if you spread that over a large amount of acreage and, and you can't make that deadline of when you want to make this application, it can be difficult. So it's just something to think about as you are debating whether or not you want to use a foliar fertilizer. Um, you can look back at previous years that we have done eFields research, and we have still yet to see a, a large difference in yield, but it even becomes. Now that pretty much summarizes the research plot here we did in Brown County last year. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, hopefully from today you're able to walk away with some management decisions or hopefully some information that will help you make these management decisions heading into the 2021 growing season. Now, while this information is not going to be the best for you to use to determine if it's going to have a yield benefit or not, I think this is a really good opportunity to think about if you're going to have the time to make these types of applications. You know, for time for you to sit down and plan, what does your, your upcoming year look like? How, spread, how thin are you spread? And uh, how much time are you willing to set aside to make this application? And as I mentioned before, if you look back in the 2018-2019 eField reports, there are several other foliar fertilizer applications that were made during the timely manners, and you can check out those resources as well. And of course, for those of you here in Brown County, always reach out to the Brown County Extension Office, and I'll be happy to uh, help you if you want to look at doing other research plots in the county for 2021. I know we already have a couple set up for this spring, so be sure to give us a call if you're interested.